Hey everybody, so this video is kind of on the fly, but I just downloaded uh, Revit 2024 and thought I could kind of just go through some of the things I saw. So I haven't played around with uh, 24 uh, very much. I don't have anything really planned for this video. Um, really the only thing I've done uh, with 24 is install it, but also read uh, the AC Bytes article from Dan Stein, and I thought if anything, it'd be cool to discuss this. Uh, if you are looking for like a cool, um, you know, what's new, then I would definitely recommend checking out uh, this article here. Uh, it should give you a good um, overview of all the new features of Revit 24, and then. Uh, Revit Pure uh, has a pretty good article as well, uh, and there's plenty of others uh, online that you can find, um, but I'll link those two below, so feel free to check those out. Those will give you a better, well-rounded um, understanding of what you know has been updated, better than what I'm going to do here, which is not go through everything. Uh, but th I think there's a lot of cool things. Um, there's functionality things uh, like this here with the uh, linking coordination models. Uh, I think this is really cool. Um, I live in the MEP world and I don't know of the use cases just yet. There might be some pretty good ones, um, but typically we have to work in the same version of Revit as the Arch. I don't really see that changing with this feature, but there may be um, situations where it might come in handy. So you can link in Revit models and you can link in uh, other versions of Revit models. So uh, Dan wrote here, Dan Stein wrote uh, 24 um, models. You can link in the 22 version without needing to upgrade the model, which I think that's pretty cool. That's not something that you could do easily uh, without converting a model into another format and then linking it in that way. Um, I know before with coordination models, like with Navisworks, it was pretty limited in the way that uh, you could have it viewed in the model. There wasn't a lot of uh, flexibility with those um, with those types of links. However, I haven't messed with it uh, yet. I haven't messed with that for, for some time. Uh, so it might have changed. And I'd be interested to know what other formats uh, you can link. Um, that would be, it'd be cool. Um, I use, typically in my situation, I use a lot of uh, Revit models. I don't work with a lot of other file formats. Um, CAD is probably the really the only other one, AutoCAD, um, and as most of you know, you can link that into Revit. Um, a lot of cool stuff related to the UI that I think is really, uh, really awesome. So, uh, and by the way, this is one of the sample models. It's a new one, the Snowden Towers, and this is... I think was created by Paul Albin. Uh, I saw that on LinkedIn recently. I can't remember the post, and if I find it, I'll share it below. Uh, but he has a lot of um, content out there, Paul Albin does, on AU, and he does, I follow a lot of his LinkedIn learning stuff. He has a really cool, cool course that talks about um, uh, just every week he has a new tip and trick and I find those really interesting because sometimes they're like really unique uh, issues in Revit, uh, interesting workarounds. And so it doesn't surprise me uh, if he did build this, um, that he was the one because it has a lot of uh, cool stuff in it. So uh, definitely worth checking out. I think it'd be a fun one to create uh, new content with. Um, so, I think that's super cool, uh, and by the way, if you don't know this, um, you can actually access the sample file. So it should be like the default, but if you go to your files, open, maybe you, you know, work 
for a while and you lost those samples, you don't know where those samples are and the, and I, I mentioned defaults, I meant the um, recent files, so you'll see them here, but you can access them from the file tab, uh, the file button, if you go to the open button and then down here, sample files. Uh, this will open up and you'll see actually a whole bunch of other ones. Um, there's some interesting uh, files in here, so um, check those out if uh, you ever want to. I sometimes open these. Typically I use the uh, just the ones that have been around for, for a long time, but uh, these Snowden ones are going to be fun to mess around with. There's an HVAC, there's different disciplines, there's a site, structural, facade, electrical, so a lot of cool stuff. Um, so some UI things I think are really cool. First of all, you can see there's a dark mode. I would like to know if you guys um, find this interesting or if you like the dark mode. Now I know there's two, there's two ways of doing this. You could do the kind of half dark mode with the, the canvas um, area as a, a white background or you can actually change this to a black background. I am not a fan of that. Um, I typically see folks that do that are ones that are more AutoCAD savvy or at least are more, they use AutoCAD for a long time so when they went to Revit they made it look like AutoCAD. Um, I've never been a fan of that. I learned Revit at the same time I learned AutoCAD so I never felt the need to do that um, and really just like it this way. Um, but I'd be interested to hear who, how you guys like, like it. Um, uh, do you like the, the banners and the properties and stuff being dark and then this white, or do you like everything being dark or nothing at all? Um, there was an interesting conversation at my firm about that and some folks like one and others like the other. So, um, and to do that, if you don't know, and a lot of this stuff is in those posts, like I said, they're going to go over it a lot better than I would. But um, if you click on, let's go back here, click on file, if we go to options, and then if we go to, yes, is it colors, and then you can see there's dark and light. I, so when I installed this, it defaulted to dark, and I don't know if that's because I have my window set to dark. I use dark mode on almost everything, uh, and I'm trying this out, and so far I really like the properties and the, uh, the tab and the panels is dark mode. I think that's super cool. Um, I like it a lot better. Um, so I think I'm going to stick with it. But uh, here's where you would change if you didn't like that. Uh, maybe you had it as your default and you wanted to go back to light. That's where you would, uh, you would do it from. I'm going to switch that back to dark. This is the background. I, I don't like that. I never have in previous versions. I've never done that. I know a lot of people do. I just, I don't like it at all. Um, so I'm going to just cancel that. So... Um, yeah, there's that. There's also the project browser. I think that's a pretty slick thing. So it said the G, uh, I think 100 sheet was, might be wrong there. Yes, I am. I'm going to go to the cover sheet. Uh, if we zoom in, it should say, yeah, so G01. Let's do that again. G. All right, so there's that sheet. Um, so you can see here at this search bar, I think this is pretty cool. I've, I've been in Revit a lot of times where I do the keyboard shortcut search. I search the bro uh, project browser and I have to go through a bunch of items to find it. And I like that, you know, while you're typing, it's filtering down to the elements and so you can see all the different elements that have G in it and then we put zero and then we can see that really the only thing that has this is sheets um, so if there was families and other things you would see it all here so pretty cool and I think really useful and a lot of stuff have gotten these updates 
my uh, night mode kicked in, so I don't know if you guys see that on your side, but I'm going to pause it on my end and just turn that off so you might see it change. Okay, so it should be should be back now. It, it kind of gradually goes into it, um, and so at first I don't notice it, and then it gets like real light. Um, so if you if you notice that, that was on my end, should be good now. Um, I have not tested that on a video yet to see if that affects the screen, uh, but it's just a, a Windows thing where you can do a night mode uh, and it just turns off the blue light. Um, I have it kick in at 7.30 or so. All right, um, so that's super cool. Let's bring this, this post back over here. Um, there's a lot of cool uh, user interface stuff, so you can see that here. That's what he's talking about. Um, dark mode. So you can see there the black background with the dark. I love the, the properties and all of that being dark. I think that's super cool. And it's very similar to everything else I use. Um, it's just like that. So I really really like that update. It's small, but I think it's cool. A uh, lot of schedule updates and like just like UI functionality type things. Like you have the ability to drag over multiple sheets, um, or sorry, multiple views. And so I'm just gonna create some. Okay, so Place those three views. I'm gonna go down here and just create a new sheet real quick. I don't really care what it looks like. So now you can see whenever you drag them on, it stacks them in a really nice way. And you can drag all three on at the same time. You can see it shows up now sheet under sheets. We can see all of the new views that are on that sheet. Um, and obviously this is not meant for this sheet. Um, but I think that's a really cool feature, especially if you can search. So if you name things a certain way and you want all of those things onto a certain sheet, then you can search for it and then select those at the same time, drag them over, and boom, you're done. Also, what's really cool, and I'm going to uh, get rid of this, go back down to Sheets, right-click, New Sheet. Again, I'm just going to do the default one. Um, I'm going to paste that string back in there. Um, so I paused it just to look at that article. I s thought I saw that you could place uh, a view multiple times uh, on Sheets. And I thought I saw that in the Revit Peer video. Yeah, I just looked at the article uh i watched the revit peer video uh, which i totally recommend i think i may have misheard it uh and thought it was place a view on multiple sheets but um i think he was probably talking about the being able to select multiple views which is what i just showed you uh, and then drag them over and place them onto a sheet um yeah because 
this functionality isn't different than before. You have to duplicate your uh, your views and and then place those onto your your sheets. So so I'm going to close that. We'll go back over here. Close that. Um, So placing multiple views, 2D element, draw order, and 3D families, that's pretty cool. Uh, resizable dialogues. Uh, this is pretty neat. And the way that you know if it's resizable is if it has uh, this here. And so we'll do another one. You can see there. It has those like little dots at the corner. I think most everything is now resizable. So here's the warning dialog box. You can see we can expand that. So pretty cool. Uh, definitely helpful, especially when you get these uh, really long strings. You can see there that that's pretty helpful. Um, there's a number of MEP related updates as well. I think those are down at the bottom of this article. Some pretty cool topo stuff, it looks like, from the update that was covered in the um, Revit Peer video as well. Yeah, so here's some of the uh, other discipline updates. So we've got structural, mechanical, electrical, plumbing. Not a ton of stuff there. Uh, however, I'll be interested to see um, just playing around with Revit, just see all the different things. Uh, this may not be the full list, I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, check this out. There's a video too, uh, so check that out. Um, if you want to learn more about what's new in Revit 2024. And while we're at it, I just want to mention that this is pretty dang cool. So the Revit lookup, I just, so this, I just installed Revit 24 and then I installed Revit lookup and it looks really cool. Now I can't talk about it much. But just like Revit had a bunch of like UI functionality updates, so um, so to, so is Revit Lookup. I haven't used like an updated version of Revit Lookup for the other Revit versions, so I don't know if those have changed and have the updates now um, in them, or if this is only a 24 update. I'm not sure, but you can see here if we select on this sheet. Uh, right off the bat you can you can look up at the modified title box so this uh, here we can see that snoop selection is now available so I, that's really cool to me before I would I would always I created like a keyboard shortcut which is easy to do and then you can set it to uh, be the um, see if it's still there yeah so snoop active or Snoop selection, which doesn't even look like it's here anymore, which makes sense, but before it was, and so I would create a keyboard shortcut. And if I remember, the reason why I didn't use that is because sometimes, like, by, when you're doing the keyboard shortcut, it would not actually work sometimes for certain elements in, in certain situations. And so I would just have to go to the add-ins tab. I would always accidentally cl click on the manage tab because I was always thinking about Dynamo uh, and then come here and click on it. So I think this is super cool. Very small, but really cool because I do this a lot. I will select on an element, snoop it, come over here, look at the elements. And then as you probably could see, there's a search just like the project browser. Uh, this is really cool too. So if we typed in location, we can see there's a, a location point associated with this. So if we click on that, then we can see the uh, properties of that uh, object there. Very easy to do. So if you've got an like, it, maybe you're working with a new element, uh, 
and you want to see if there's a parameter or some type of property associated to it, uh, then you can quickly search that, see if that's the property you need or you want, quickly check it, um, you know, whatever that is. So I, that's really cool, and I haven't messed with this a ton. I'd recommend just uh, installing it and playing around with it. Uh, but that, right off the bat, I think is going to be really helpful and save a lot of time. Uh, so uh, what's another one? So if we did like parameter set, went in there, uh, we could search, let's do like family. Yeah, so there's our different family. Uh, parameters let's go to family and type I don't think if we try to it might work no it, it isn't searching this because there's things here to search it might change no I'm not sure event monitoring uh, dashboard I haven't messed with this this looks pretty slick the whole thing looks pretty slick the UI uh, a lot of cool updates. Um, I haven't played around with Dynamo yet, so I'm excited to jump into there. John Pearson, I think, did a video related to Revit API and Dynamo updates, so I would recommend checking out that video uh, if you want to learn more about the API updates and, uh, and Dynamo. Um, I haven't watched the video, but I'm sure it's really good. I'm going to check it out. So, um, anyways, yeah, that's it for this one. Like I said, this isn't a, like we're not going through Revit. I just think it's really cool. I just installed it. It was, I mean, just right off the bat, opening it has been a lot of fun, checking out the new stuff. So I'd recommend just doing the same if, uh, if you can. Um, try to get it installed and just play around with it because it has a lot of cool stuff. And if you're an architect, uh, I'd encourage you to upgrade all your models to 24 because it means your uh, MEP contractors can, uh, your MEP partners can start to use 24 as well. Um, I'm just kidding there, but it does, on the MEP side of the world, it, we're typically stuck in whatever the arch chooses. And so it might be a year or so before uh, we're really in 24, you know, barely any. And probably the bulk of what we're working on is going to be in 21, 22, some in 23. That's just how it goes uh, in MEP. But um, I'm excited to just have it installed. I'm going to play around with it. I'll probably do a lot of my videos going forward in 20. Or I said 23, I think. Uh, but I'll do a lot of my videos in 24. Um, so anyways, thanks a lot for watching. And that's all I got.